Process improvement methods have been used for thousands of years. Here's a brief timeline. You will recognize most of the methods. You already use them in your job today. For hundreds of years, the master craftsman taught his apprentice specialized skills. On-the-job training was the foundation of the Industrial Revolution. In the USA, from the 1850s on, we saw steel, railroad, and oil businesses thrive, growing faster than the new master craftsman could train an apprentice. Master craftsmen save time, but training an apprentice is a slow process. At the turn of the 20th century, to meet the demand for automobiles, owners reduced their dependence on master craftsmen. Ford creates a production line with standardized parts, so less skill is needed to build a car. At General Motors, Sloan hired professional managers to blend the skills of the employees. About the same time, in 1909, Pareto studied property ownership in Italy, where 20% of the people owned 80% of the land. That observation evolved in today's 80-20 rule, focus on what is most important. For years, Carnegie, Vanderbilt, and Rockefeller just tracked their cash flow. But like Sloan, the DuPonts began to use financial ratio analyses for profitability, profit margins, operational efficiency, asset turnover, and financial leverage, debt to equity, their professional managers work to optimize their part of the formula. Today, we call that managing by your p &L. In the late 1920s, Walter A. Seward and his protege, Edward Deming, at Bell Labs, developed a method to use the normal curve for statistical process control charts. Today, we call that Six Sigma. In the 1930s, Deming worked at the Department of Agriculture and simplified Seward's approaches. He joined the Emergency Technical Committee, which published the World War II American War Standards. The written standards had to be easy to understand because as we mobilized, many unskilled workers joined the workforce. In World War II, generals and admirals developed standard operating procedures for the troops, often just for their personal commands. As folks were drafted, they had to quickly be assimilated into the Navy and Army. So these operating procedures, again, had to be very simple. This World War II generation mastered planning by modeling complex tasks using table models to schedule the flow of materials from start to finish. The Normandy landings involved 5,000 ships. On the flow chart, they created lanes A, B, and C to sequence the ships to the French beaches, and then the ship's mission completed, it would return to England between the lanes. They painted the map on a floor and moved models of the ships by hand based on the timeline. Using these lane flow charts to clarify not only the steps, but who would be responsible for each one, how to assess delays, mistakes, or enemy damage that would affect the flow of troops to the beaches. Today we call the method swim lanes. In the United States, most of Deming's simplified process improvement methods were lost in the noise as manufacturers rushed to meet demand for consumer products after the war. But the U.S. Navy had to perfect complex manufacturing for nuclear submarines. They introduced a program evaluation and review technique called PERT to estimate durations for material delivery to the shipyard and construction task, and they used a critical path analysis to determine if the project was on track. The goal was to shorten time to complete the job. Those of you using Microsoft Project today live in this world. In the 1950s, Deming had been invited to Japan to help Japanese industry recover from the war damage. And he introduced his simplified methods, including the dimming cycle. Plan, do, check, and act. And he preached to the Japanese industrialist to keep it simple. 
Toyota became the best example of using simple methods and continuous process improvement to achieve high quality, the ability to produce to the actual demand in the marketplace, and a continuous process improvement culture that continues today to simplify their manufacturing processes. After Kennedy challenged the nation to land on the moon, NASA blended Deming's methods, the U.S. Navy methods, the Pareto concept of 80-20, and for the first time using computer modeling, designed and tested their rockets and equipment. They also introduced continuous measurement techniques on the rocket ships to allow them to manage the mission using a dashboard, the computer screens and mission control. By the early 1980s, the lessons from NASA's success were picked up by the business community and businesses adopted the methodologies. In the mid-1980s, Norton and Kaplan promoted the balanced scorecard, which blended different measurement methods for revenue growth and productivity, mapping how each of the key activities supported the strategy for a business. In 1994, Champion and Hammer wrote Reengineering the Corporation, that is business process reengineering. The manufacturing side had come to Main Street with all of its complexity. But we're going to show you how to keep it simple, make it work, make it pragmatic.